My name is Ann Holler, and I um, appreciate the chance to talk with you today about efficient deep learning training with Ludwig Otto and Bell, Ray, and Noodle Noodless Kubernetes. <laughs> Noodless Kubernetes. All right, cool. I want to start off by just uh, a shout out to people from the Ludwig, Ray, and Elodal communities who've done various work that contributed to this slide set. Uh, so, including the CNCF blog that we published in uh, February of this year on managing public cloud resources for deep learning training, uh, the Medium blog on Ludwig AutoML and AutoML for deep learning, which involved tabular data sets, um, and our cloud native rejects talk from this past fall um, on a proof of concept of running uh, Ray on the public cloud. So, without further ado, let's get started. Um, so, deep learning has been very successfully applied to many fields, including business and science of various sorts, but it's well known that it's difficult to bring deep learning from development into production. Ray and Ludwig are open source systems that have uh, worked to reduce the complexity of deep learning training, scaling, deploying, and serving. But even with some reduction in complexity, deep learning's cost and operational overhead present significant challenges. Uh, deep learning development intermittently requires substantial GPU resources. Uh, these resources, uh, cloud vendors are happy to provide them, but at a non-trivial price. And so managing the cost and operational overhead um, around deep learning uh, is critical to uh, managing deep learning uh, and being able to afford it in a practical sense. Elodal's nodeless Kubernetes a nickname Luna, uh, commoditizes compute for Kubernetes clusters. It provides just-in-time, right-sized, effective, um, cost-effective compute for Kubernetes applications when they start and removes those resources when the applications finish. So, Elodal's um, technology is targeted at this problem of uh, managing cloud, public cloud resources judiciously. So, let's m marry the two and bring in uh, Ludwig and Ray, running on public cloud Kubernetes clusters, using Luna as the smart cluster provisioner. So that's the topic of this talk. Um, and so we'll show experiments that um, using Ludwig deep learning automatic ML training was, it showed sizable improvements in efficiency and usability uh, running them on uh, Kubernetes clusters in the cloud using Luna versus running them the default way I was doing it before I got educated. So you'll see that it uh, basically uh, lowered operational overhead while improving elapsed time by 61%, computing costs by 54%, and idle ray cluster costs by 66%, with no um, uh, reduction in the performance quality of the models. Uh, just a little background information on Ludwig and Ray. So Ludwig uh, is an open source deep learning framework for end-to-end -end machine learning that supports a variety of things. Op it operates on a declarative YAML interface, eliminating the need to write code, and typically deep learning requires a lot of code. It scales up to out-of-memory data sets and multi-node clusters using Horobot and Ray. It allows you to experiment with different model hyperparameters using Raytune, we'll talk about that today. Um, and it allows you to serve in production using MLflow. Ray is an open source distributed execution framework that targets large-scale machine learning uh, applications such as the ones that uh, Ludwig uh, is uh, training. It performs par automatic parallelization of Python code with minimal code changes to the serial code. Uh, it includes many libraries. We'll just focus on the Raytune library today. And it supports deployment in various environments um, directly onto AWS um, VMs is one, and of course on public cloud Kubernetes clusters is on another. These are two things we'll talk about today. To continue to push the envelope of decreasing the complexity of deep learning, Ludwig recently introduced uh, AutoML functionality. Uh, the idea of AutoML functionality is that you, as the person developing a deep learning model, you just give Ludwig AutoML your data set, the target column you want to predict, and a, a time budget for doing hyperparameter search. And Ludwig AutoML infers the data types of all the columns in your input data set. It chooses a deep learning model architecture for you. It selects the search parameters and ranges for those search parameters, and it runs a Raytune uh, hyperparameter search for you on Raytune GPU workers. And it outputs the best tuned model it found, 
along with all the models it found. Um, and uh, it returns these models in the form of standard models. So it's choosing well understood models that you'll be able to reason about as the user. Um, and you'll be able to serve flexibly in many environments because they're well understood models. And it returns the training configs that you use to produce those models. So you can, as a human, see what it did. You, as a human, can edit what it did. And these are YAML files that, that you could then send into the system yourself. Uh, the original version that we talked about earlier is, was for tabular data sets just in the past two weeks. It's been extended to text classification data sets. Uh, so the algorithms that uh, were developed to do this um, automatic auto ML were um, developed using thousands of hours of GPU time of model training across 12, data, 12 tabular data sets. And so these thousands of hours involved running three different model architectures and a total of 24 hyperparameters across a wide range of values. Um, and so, you know, after that process was done, an additional nine data sets were chosen to see if this algorithm could really work on data sets that it hadn't seen before. So 12 new tabular data sets. Um, and uh, with those 12 new tab, I mean, nine new tabular data sets after the 12, with these nine new data sets within a two hour time budget, AutoML could give you accuracy competitive with publicly reported manually tuned models. And I can guarantee you those folks spend more than two hours developing those models. So uh, it's uh, a very effective uh, system. And the, um, what it does can be leveraged, highly leveraged, by training in the cloud. And so that's the subject of this talk. And the final um, piece of the puzzle is the Luna functionality for doing flexible resource management for Kubernetes clusters in the cloud. So Luna is a smart cluster provisioner that runs in standard Kubernetes clusters. It's monitoring for pending pod creation requests. It's adding additional compute to those uh, clusters as needed to satisfy those requests. That com compute can be VMs on demand or spot. It can be serverless compute like AWS Fargate. Um, and it chooses that compute based on the current availability in the cloud, based on cost in the cloud, and based on other user-specific requirements. You may have requirements around the kind of GPU you want, for example, for machine learning workloads, and you can convey that to Luna. And it's on an ongoing basis, it's monitoring node usage, and it's able to remove compute from the Kubernetes cluster when it's no longer needed. Uh, so Luna is comparable to Kubernetes cluster autoscaler, but it provides more flexible node selection without the need to create and maintain what can often be hundreds of node groups to have the full flexibility for a particular um, cloud vendor. Um, it's a, somewhat similar to AWS Carpenter, but it works across cloud vendors. It provides the ability to do instance family exclusion, and it supports de deterministic application of placement rules. So that's the background. Let's go into the experiments. So basically, of those nine data sets we used to validate the functionality of AutoML, we chose three to, to show the difference between the way I was originally doing this validation and what's possible using the public cloud with Luna. So for those three data sets, they were run with a, a training budget of one hour, two hour, and four hour um, timeframes. And they were run on a baseline ray cluster that was deployed directly on EC2 and VMs. And they were run in two cluster configurations on the public cloud using Luna. So, we will look at these three configurations. We'll compare elapsed time, workload, and idle compute cost, and the operational complexity of, of dealing with these things. And we'll look, we'll give an overview first, and then we'll deep dive each one. So the top is what I was originally doing. Um, and this is how I validated the nine uh, data sets. Uh, worked well with AutoML. So I deployed a three node cluster directly on AWS VMs. I used NVIDIA T4 uh, VMs because they work well for this workload. These workloads are very sensitive to the kind of GPU you use. This is a very cost-effective GPU for this workload. And you see that the head and the two workers are all GPU enabled, meaning the head can also run a training job. Alternative one, number one is instead of deploying directly onto uh, AWS VMs, the variable size ray cluster is deployed onto a Kubernetes cluster in the cloud. And that Kubernetes cluster has got Luna, the nodeless uh, uh, technology running in it. And so when that cluster is deployed, it's a variable sized cluster. So only the head is deployed. And in fact, Luna goes and fetches a VM that's appropriate to run that head, which is GPU enabled uh, node. 
Um, and then as the workload is running, the Ray Autoscaler will add nodes to the cluster, the Ray cluster, when they're needed. And Luna will go and find the right compute to add to the Kubernetes cluster to satisfy what the Ray Autoscaler is looking for. And when the Ray Autoscaler realizes the workers are not busy, it will remove them, and then um, Luna will remove them from the Kubernetes cluster. The second alternative is just like the first, except that the head node is a CPU only. So in this case, when the nodes are all you know, quiescent, when there's nothing running in the Ray cluster, there's only a CPU node running rather than having that GPU node running, which is cheaper. So why did I run this way? <laughs> you know, why was this my baseline? Well, there's three different things that were nice from the standpoint of uh, someone, you know, starting out running a Ray cluster. One was I wanted a standardized amount of compute for the AutoML time budget. So if you're going to run AutoML for one hour, two hours, or four hours, you need to know how much compute backs that up. And so there was a standard idea. There were three nodes of a certain type of GPU, and that was the standard for uh, running that AutoML budget. The second is I wanted to control operational complexity. I didn't want to worry about whether I got a legitimate run. I wanted to believe that when I ran for one hours, two hours, and four hours, that the entire time budget had the compute I expected backing it up. And the third thing was I wanted to limit auto idle costs. So after I would run an experiment, I would log into the Ray head, and I would look and make sure that everything was good, and look at it, you know, poke around, maybe try a few other commands in the context of what was run. So I was pretty sensitive to um, idle costs. So I wanted to run you know, one set of things at a time serially to control idle cost at the end. And so given all these constraints, you know, G4DN means T4 GPUs, which is what's key for this workload. Uh, 4X Large had better availability than the cheaper versions. So 4X Large is outside of the GPU. It's how much CPU memory there is and so on. Three nodes, because I knew that that standard amount of compute power could handle the auto-tune jobs, which run up to, 12 I mean, run up to 10 trials. Um, so I had a good sense that that would satisfy these kinds of time budgets. Fixed size, because I didn't want to worry that I tried to crank up the cluster and the, the nodes wouldn't be there, like if I used the autoscaler. And non-spot, because I didn't want the instances to go away or I wouldn't get a legit run. And finally, as we already said, a single job at a time. So with this budget, um, I'm trying to move. Sorry, I'm trying to go. Oh, here we go. All right. So what happened? So this is our baseline. So at our baseline, of course, we, as we expect, uh, the accuracy is competitive with the externally reported models. The elapsed time was 22.6 hours. So you might say, well, why wasn't the elapsed time 21 hours? Like three times one plus three times two plus three times four. The extra 1.6 hours was set up time where the head loads in the data set and divvies it out to the different way workers. And also the best model for each trial is evaluated on the head after the Ray job is over. So those, that's where the extra 1.6 hours comes from. Um, so running for 22.6 hours on G4DN4X large, they cost $1.204 an hour. So that was $81.631, and my idle cost is $3.612 an hour. So kind of cool, but it would be nice to not have to wait 22 uh, 0.6 hours for the results. That would be great. It would be nice to have less idle cost than what we saw. And it would be really nice if we could also save some time, some cost on the workload itself. And of course, the obvious choice would have been to run the Ray Autoscaler, but I didn't want to do that initially because I couldn't trust that it would find the kind of instances I wanted at runtime, because you have to kind of hard code what it's looking for. But once you move to the Kubernetes world, you don't hard code the kind of instance you're looking for. You just express what resources are needed. And then when Ray Autoscaler asks for those resources in Kubernetes, then Luna can step in and grab them for me. And of course, Luna could bring things down when they're not needed anymore. So this is cool. And it's pretty obvious this is going to help me be able to run you know, three jobs at a time for one hour, three jobs at a time, two hours, three jobs at a time for four hours. And so I'm going to save elapsed time, and I'm definitely going to save idle cost. But am I going to save that much during the workload? Like, I wasn't sure uh, how to think about that. Certainly, I'm going to save the 1.6 hours of time that the, only the head is needed. But what about the other you know, 21 hours? Well, it turns out 
there actually is a lot of savings there. So one of the things that AutoML does is run the Raytune with this thing called the async hyperband scheduler. And what that does is it looks at uh, the trials that are going on in parallel, and it discontinues ones that aren't giving good results compared to the ones it's already seen. And so as it turns out, it's bringing down a lot of trials of those 10 max trials that are run for an AutoML job. And so you don't really need three workers, because once there's fewer than three trials left, you don't need three workers to run that workload. So if you look here, Sorry, I'm having trouble with getting this thing to go forward. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, here we go. That's another way to do it. Um. Okay, so if you, sorry about this. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's not uh, moving forward. Yeah, whatever's the most reliable. <laughs> Those two? Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, so here's what's happening under the hood. Basically, if you look at this, this is time. So that's the 22.6 hours on the x-axis. And on the y-axis is the data sets, the trials with those data sets. So that top 10 trials is the trials run for the first data set for one hour, followed by the next data set for one hour, followed by the next data set for one hour, and then... Oh, I'm running out of time. Okay. Um, oh, well, I'll try to wrap up as quickly as I can. I got started a little late. So anyway, you can see there that for most of the uh, data sets, not all three workers aren't needed the entire time. Um, so, uh, so moving to the GPU head, um, the idea here is that we deploy on the GPU head running on, uh, we deploy Ray on a EKS cluster with a GPU head. Luna is running in that cluster doing the auto scaling. Um, and we set max concurrent trials to three so that during that auto scaling, um, each of the data sets that's running in parallel will get up to three workers, just like it would have in the isolated cluster. And so when we do that, we still don't have any um, reduction in the quality of the model. Uh, but the elapsed time is greatly reduced from, you know, this 22.6 hours to 8.75 hours because we're able to run in parallel. The idle cost is greatly reduced because now the head is only running when you're idle. Um, and the workload cost is greatly reduced because of two reasons. One is uh, auto scaling. So that's the bottom reason, which we expected. We knew that we didn't need all three workers during the full run. The second one is that Luna was able to find cheaper resources, which I wasn't willing to do um, as a person trying different things, but Luna was able to run the workers on cheaper instances than the head. The head needed the bigger instance anyway. Uh, remaining uh, opp opportunity, really close now, remaining opportunity is to run on the CPU head itself. That would be much cheaper than a GPU instance, and uh, it would allow you possibly to leave the cluster up all the time. Like, I would feel kind of guilty to leave the cluster up all the time, even with just the GPU head. But once you're running a CPU head, you can see how much cheaper it is. So again, no compromise on the quality of the model um, results. But lapse time was a little slower than 8.75, which we got with the GPU head, because the CPU head is a little slower at running the evaluation of the models. Uh, but still much faster than 22.6 hours. Uh, but the idle cost here, the, the CPU that um, Elodil, uh, Luna found for me only cost 0 0.452 an hour, which I might be willing to just leave up all the time for the convenience when it's so much cheaper than a GPU head. Uh, the baseline uh, difference in the running cost was pretty much similar to the other, um, uh, other one, and this is the breakdown, so you can see it's similar. So in, in general, we learned that, we, we slash I learned and shared with you, um, that using um, Luna technology in a Kubernetes cluster in the cloud, working together with the Ray Autoscaler, can save a lot of money, can save a lot of operational hassle, and is really worth doing. Uh, so anyway, that's it. Um, we, our future work will continue to enhance Luna 
to handle efficient scaling across diverse Kubernetes workloads and the public cloud vendors, and we'll continue to enhance Ludwig Auto ML to take advantage of the power of Luna to, uh, to allow public clouds to scale well for uh, deep learning jobs. So anyway, thanks for your patience and uh, appreciate it.